Jerry Tashwa here again with tip number two, sticking. Anybody who's ever played a mallet instrument understands some of the complexities associated with sticking. In other words, executing melodic lines with your mallets in such a way that after you play the line, you're not all tangled in a knot. I've also found that if I take my time and if I look at a specific melodic section and actually figure out which hand makes the most sense to hit certain notes, if I could spend the time at it, then it becomes sort of my weapons later on. In other words, it gets stored into my subconscious and later on when that same kind of melodic lick will reemerge, that I've already had a resolution for it and I know how to do it. Now, back when I first started studying mallet instruments, I coming, I'm coming from a predominantly a snare drum world where everything was alternating, sticking, single stroke roll kind of approach. Some of the early method books that I studied out of advocated the use of alternating stickings to play on the mallet instruments. I personally had a hard time with that for the simple reason that I'm always trying to look for ways to play my music that will be cleaner, more accurate, less motion, and just overall simpler to execute. And I'll give you an example. In this early book, it talked about playing an E-flat major scale. And it said, okay, start with your left hand and alternating sticking. So if you start with your left hand, staying in the center of the bars, which is where the biggest part of the sound should emanate from, start on your left hand, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. Right, we get to there. And then there's always that hesitation zone where we're going to that second octave and the sticking is different. Now it's, and I end with my left. And when I come down, there's that hesitation again because the sticking is different and I have to find it to continue the line. This always bothered me for two reasons. One, I had to memorize two different octave stickings, but more so I noticed that I had this lateral motion where my left hand would come down, my right hand would go up to this register and then it would shift. So when you have this lateral motion, you're introducing extra movement and with that extra movement is the more likelihood of hitting a wrong note or being less accurate. And I'm trying again to stay in the center of the bars. So if I could reduce the motion, I'll play cleaner, more accurate and faster. So I started incorporating some doublings. So here I went with right, 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 left, left. So as you can see, immediately I got rid of the lateral motion. Again, the general rule is reduce motion, increase accuracy, speed, and the ability to play clean, fast, accurate lines with no mistakes. So I got rid of the lateral motion. It allowed me then to continue to have my hands in the center of the bars, where again you want to be, which is the strongest sound that you can get out of mallet instruments, and it just makes sense. So I, I did this kind of thing all the time. Now again, back in the earlier books, the alternating sticking approach to me was complicated because he would have you alternate sticking, but sometimes this line would start with the left hand and sometimes the line would start with, with the right hand, depending on which beat you're on. If you're on the end of a beat, I think it would be you would start sometimes with your left hand and I could never keep all that organized and straight. So I started incorporating this pattern that I just showed you. In my method book, which is a contemporary mallet method and approach to vibraphone and marimba, I went through all of the keys, every one of the major scales, and I came up with a sticking suggestion. I always say suggestion because if somebody else has a, a better idea, I'm open to it, but these are kind of things that I came up with. So these sticking suggestions allow you then to play two octave scales where you're basically playing the same sticking for both octaves and you're trying to renew, reduce motion so that you can stay in the center of the bars and play faster and cleaner. So I went through every one of the scales 
and gave you a suggested sticking pattern. Now, obviously, we practice scales for a couple reasons. We practice scales so that we can hear relationships of pitch. We want to be able to hear what the third sounds like. We want to be able to hear what the, the root to the fifth sounds like, what the leading tone T to DO sounds like. We also want to be able to hear key centers. You want to know what C sounds like, what D flat sounds like, what D major sounds like. All these things are important as you're practicing your scales. However, scales are not real musical. You're not going to go to a concert and hear somebody say, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to play for my next piece, a C major scale up and down two octaves. It won't happen. It's not very musical. As a matter of fact, you can go to the library and open up just about any piece of music and you're not going to find a major scale up and down two octaves anywhere because, again, it's, it's not real musical. But yet we practice our, these scales every day, every day, every day to get clean, fast, or accurate, to hear the pitches, to work on, work on tonic centers and understand how tone you know, evolves and what it may, means to our ears. At one point, you need to get to the point where you know your scales. There's no question you can play a scale up and down. At that point, we need to quit playing scales and we need to just kind of like improvise a little bit. And this is something I'll get into in one of our further tips. But one more thing I'd like to talk about regarding sticking, and this is sort of important, is that the scales that I'm giving you, like example, E flat scale with the doublings, cutting down on the motion. Now, because I know it as an E flat scale, there's a lot of other chord scales that'll be part of this scale. In other words, if I'm playing a C minor, that's that sticking, F minor, D minor 7 flat 5, and so in other words, these are all snippets of kind of the E-flat scale. So even though I may not play the E-flat scale as a scale, if I just do a, a, poor, a part of the scale, I'm utilizing that sticking. Left, right, right, left. So sticking is one of those things we really have to pay attention to. We have to understand what the goal is. The goal is to make music and make it sound good. And our sticking is just something that we have to utilize and be aware of to allow us to be musical, but yet not something that we're over uh, concerned about. In other words, if we practice our scales, if we practice these licks that I'm talking about, eventually they will come back subconsciously within our playing only because we know how to incorporate some of those doublings in different melodic passages that make sense. So anyway, that's it for this uh, concept on sticking. Hope it helps a little bit. Uh, we'll be doing another uh, mallet tip number three. I hope you look for it and uh, enjoy yourself. Thank you so much.